Welcome back to the Daily Defender. Great to be with everybody again. Glad you're with us as well. Glad you're uh, tuning in for some more uh, content, some more uh, some more information uh, on a new video. So thank you for for joining us. Uh, straight away, you'll notice that we're going to kind of do a little bit of a a different view with the intro. I got numerous comments asking if. Uh, you know that they couldn't really see the firearm that was uh, that we were talking about and reviewing on the intro. It was too far away. Some of the lighting, etc. So uh, I really wasn't sure how this was going to work in this room um, with the camera angle in this table in this room. But uh, you know, just viewing it, kind of uh, uh, doing some test runs. I, I like the way this looks. So hopefully you guys like it as well. You can certainly see the firearm better, I think, on the intro and. And, uh, and we can talk a little bit about it. So, but uh, straight away, I've got to, you know, thank all the subs new subscribers. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all of the views and comments. The comments have been great. Keep them coming. Uh, appreciate the feedback, but also love the interaction, um, especially on the J frames. As you guys know, it kind of did a little bit of a mini series there. The last four or five vids were, uh, we're on the snub nose, J frame, Smith and Wessons. And, uh, I really like doing those. They were a lot of fun. Obviously you guys liked them as well. Uh, a lot of comments. I think the, the lady Smith was the, was the most popular and a great firearm. So, uh, thanks for all that. So, but please can continue to subscribe as I've stated before, we can't really move the channel forward, uh, without, uh, without subscribers. So, uh, and that's of course what we're trying to do, but you know, most importantly, hope you like the content and, and thanks for the comments. So, uh, I wanted to get back into semi-automatics and of course, Smith and Wesson whenever possible. So, uh, today we're going to talk about a third generation, uh, Smith and Wesson 6906. And these were basically the compact models that they, uh, they came out with, but were the extension of the second generation uh, compacts, right? There were no compact firearms in the first generation, but by the time Smith and Wesson moved to the second generation in the 80s, they were making these small compact um, nine millimeters, the um, the 469 and the 669, they would have been three digit numbers. And uh, I don't know if the story is accurate or not. Maybe somebody could comment on that. I, I believe uh, there were actually some custom gun makers or shops that were cutting down full size Smith and Wessons to these compact firearms. And Smith and Wesson, you know, got wind of that and quickly connected the dots and realized there was a large market for these compact firearms um, with detectives, plain clothes, you know, obviously civilians as well. So it's in the second generation guns were popular, uh, popular enough that they continued them into the third generation, which we have here. Uh, and I also believe they extend, expended the ex, uh, extended or expanded the calibers. Um, um, this of course is a nine millimeter firearm, but the third generations also added the 40 and 45. If memory serves me right, there were no calibers other than nine millimeter in the second gen for the smaller um, compact versions. And sometimes they were also referred to as the mini or the mini gun. Um, that term seems to float around and, and, and continued on with the third gen guns as well. So uh, that's what we want to talk about today. So again, without any further ado, let's, uh, let's get into this particular firearm, which again is going to be our Smith & Wesson third gen 6906. Right, so as I just introduced, we want to talk about the Smith & Wesson 6906. This is going to be a, a third generation uh, Smith & Wesson semi-automatic pistol in 9mm. Um, taking a step backwards a little bit, this is an extension of the second generation pistols. So Smith & Wesson um, does produce a um, compact pistol like this, and this is of course a clear and safe firearm. And so Smith & Wesson, even back in the early 80s, realizes that there's a, a market for a small compact with a potent caliber, 9mm in that. Yeah, and Smith & Wesson has the second generation semi-autos, and they do have a compact version. They would have been the three-digit numbers, the 469 and the 669. And I think they were actually termed the mini or the mini gun. I, I, I'm not sure when that term actually started to be used, but it continues with these as well, the mini or the mini gun. Uh, obviously from its from its size and the second gen guns ran from about 83 to 89 you know kind of a traditional 80s platform and then as we've talked about before if you're aware uh, Smith & Wesson decides in the late 80s to introduce its third generation platform about 88 
and um, and then they this particular one runs to about nineteen um, ninety nine. So it has about a, a ten year uh, production run, if you will, as as this third gen firearm. And I should also state the compacts in the third gen are, were also produced in forty caliber and forty five. So they expanded the caliber range for the third gen guns, where they just had. If I remember right, only had nine millimeter in the second gen platform. So this is our third gen platform. Like I said, it's a 6906. I always have to get that right. And uh, it's a very, very nice firearm. It um, is all, of, in my opinion, almost all of the third generation firearms uh, from Smith & Wesson, semi-autos, I should say, are, are just very nice firearms. They took a lot of voice of customer, took a lot of knowledge from the market, uh, listen to their customer base, mostly law enforcement, but also civilians, and did a really, really nice job with the third gen guns. And we'll, you know, we can try to talk a little bit about that. It is the compact, as I mentioned. I think think it's what they call it. I wouldn't consider it a subcompact. Uh, they're full size gun, like the fifty nine oh four, and of course this is a a clear and safe firearm as well. You can see is is physically larger, certainly in length and uh, with with the grip as well of course it, it carried more rounds but this would have been the traditional full size uh, what they would have considered full size back then a duty firearm although still a relatively uh, slender design the 5904 is just a, a great firearm uh, but so this again this is the compact version and it's uh this particular one is a double stack nine millimeter and we'll talk a little bit about that there was also the single stack so if you're um you know kind of familiar with that um, Smith and Wesson also made a single stack version of these of these subcompacts, and of course it's uh, it's a it's a thinner platform, um, and would have been a, a single stack um, uh, type of firearm. And again, pretty intuitive, right? Single stack nine millimeter back in the uh, in the nineties or late eighties, I should say. And and uh, but again, talking about the sixty nine oh six, very very nice firearm. Kind of give you guys a, a little bit of a close up here, and we'll do our traditional walk around. And as it's a third gen, as you've seen maybe in other other videos of mine or your own knowledge, a lot of very, very nice features uh, that they are incorporated into the third gen guns. Uh, this particular one with this model is a stainless steel slide. Uh, and again, it has some very, very nice machining to it. Uh, just where, very well done as all the third generation pistols are, especially the standards. Uh, we've talked about the uh, the value series, and, and of course they they start to uh, take away some of the very nice machining on the slide. But this one just is a, a very very nice um, look to it, very well done, etc. It does have the um, the matte, um, if you will, finish on the top to reduce glare. Um, and you know but but otherwise the the finish is, is is this this kind of polished stainless steel very very nice right good looking pistol on this side we've got uh, smith and wesson stamped here we've got the traditional smith and wesson information there we have serrations on both sides rear there's no front serrations we have the traditional smith and wesson decocker right we can talk a little bit about that decocker safety we've got a fairly um, i guess decent size although it's not it's not you know overly large in terms of your slide stop or slide release depending on your your preference on terminology um if we kind of stick with the slot or the frame i'm sorry the slide uh the sights sights are a little interesting with this one only because they uh i don't i did not check the uh the year of manufacture on this one i apologize before i started the video i'll try to look that up and put it into the video um this one they it has the old what i think or i consider the older style three dot sight that they had incorporated you can see this is a very small kind of i guess half moon rear sight um, and I'll show you the Novak site that most of them had and most of the third generations went to. And it has a, um, uh, a single um, a white dot front site, but, but it is replaceable. Um, it's not part of the, of the, uh, of the, of the slide. And, um, and, and at first, you, know, you might say that this is really small, and I actually had a few concerns with it as well. And it is a smaller rear site. Certainly no worries about that catching or snagging on anything. And interestingly enough, when you put this up to a silhouette target, this curved, um, this curved uh, portion of the rear sight 
matches up kind of amazingly well to the curved outline of the shoulder on a, on a silhouette, if you can picture that. So, um, or even the center, you know, uh, uh, target, if you will. So this, this comes up a bit more naturally, at least on target than you, than you think, but you can't take away from the fact that these are small, you know, very small rear, um, rear, uh, you know, two dot sites. There's no question about it. So it is a little difficult to pick up. The Novak site, kind of like I showed in the other, this is a more traditional site that they put on most of the third gen guns. Certainly all the, um, you know, mid nineties to late nineties gun. And it's definitely a nicer, a nicer rear site. And it's certainly larger. I purchased this one used and whoever had it, it, it painted these red and I'm just left it that way, but uh, still a, a very snag free design, but it's just a larger rear sight and your eyes just pick it up better. So it is, in my opinion, that's the better of the two, but that's the way this one came. Uh, so back to the 6906, uh, we've got rear serrations, like I mentioned on both sides. Um, and as we kind of move down into the into the frame. This is an alloy frame. So this is a fairly light firearm. I think it's 26 or 27 ounces. It does have this satin finish, which um, I like the looks of it, but I have to admit, I don't believe it to be very robust um, or, you know, certainly nothing. Uh, they, they wear fairly easy. Uh, this one already has some, some simple you know, where on the, on the, on the high points there, I don't know if the camera is going to pick up on that. You know, it's got a blemish here or there, but, uh, this, this satin finish from my understanding and even my own experience was not a, a great finish. Um, although Smith and Wesson kind of struggled with finishes with these anyways, even the blued versions, um, through the eighties and, and into the nineties, it was always a little bit of a, a pet peeve with them. Um, the, the trigger guard is the squared trigger guard. I don't even think they made any of the minis with the round. I think they were all square and it has the traditional, um, checkering up front for that, for that era, that time of, that time of production. It does have some simple lines or checkering, if you will. It's not checkering, just, uh, some lines there on the front strap. Uh, it's a traditional third gen, um, Xeon, uh, grip. Right, this is kind of a wraparound one piece. Xenoy actually uh, is the material. They moved away from the nylon uh, panels that the second generation uh, firearms had. Um, and these were either this kind of flat style or there was one with a little hump. If you've seen some of my other videos, we've talked about that as well. I prefer the flat. It's just a, it's a more natural, natural grip for me. The other two points about the frame that I think are worth mentioning is this undercut. Again, I find this very intuitive for a firearms manufacturer in the probably the mid 80s, you know, when this product was conceived that they were already thinking about an undercut, right? People talk about doing that to Glocks all the time, yet this was thought of back in the mid 80s. Um, we have a, a beaver tail here. It's not particularly large. It's not too small. It's not too large. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. You get a very nice grip and purchase on the firearm. Anything larger, I think, would detract from the concealability of it. So I think very nice job there. Um, a bit of a beveled magwell, um, nothing crazy, but there is, there is some beveling there. So, um, that was a nice touch as well. The firearm no longer has a, um, barrel bushing. The third generation gun has moved to a design now where it does not need that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the hammer. And so you can see it is a bobbed hammer, but of course, if we rack the slide, we can get a little bit better look at that hammer. It, interestingly enough, has some serrations on the top. Um, I guess one could probably try to manipulate the trigger and, and, uh, and, and I guess, work the hammer. I, I can't really imagine that being overly practical. And, of course, the whole concept with the firearm was to be a concealable, uh, small, compact firearm for detectives, off-duty, plain clothes, and, of course, civilians as well. If you're not familiar with the decocker safety on a Smith & Wesson, it's uh, in the downward position, you're uh, able to release the hammer safely. Uh, the gun could be carried in, in two ways then. You had um, you could either carry it in this fashion uh, or the, uh, I think the more prevalent fashion and certainly the way I carry them and uh, carried my off-duty gun back in the day would be in this fashion, uh, completely safe, right, obviously. Um, and uh, then at this point, you would, uh, you know, if you would have loaded a, a round in the chamber, you would have a round in the chamber and, and uh, then be able to just uh, pull the, 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 uh, the trigger in a, in a traditional double action uh, format. And then, of course, the gun would fire. You'd be in that position and then you'd be in a, 
in a, in a single action. And we'll come back and talk a little bit about that. Uh, the magazine itself is, uh, I said this was a double stacks, and it is. It's a 12-round magazine, which is nice, right? That's, again, I think forward thinking back in the mid-80s to have a 12-round um, subcompact or compact firearm. The, the Smith & Wesson mags are always very, very nice, well-made metal mags. And then we have this very nice pinky extension. Look at this. Again, someone's thinking back in the back in the 80s that, wow, we probably should have a pinky extension. Um, you know, one of the firearms I owned for a period of time was a, a, a SIG 224, which is basically a cut down, you know, 226 or 229. And, you know, if you did not acquire that firearm with the, uh, the mag extension or could not find the mag extension on the aftermarket, which was difficult to do because they only made that firearm for a, a short period of time, I will tell you, it got very irritating not having any place to put your you know, your, your pinky or anything like this. This is a very, very nice um, grip and, you know, just very natural ergonomic firearm. Um, I don't think there's any question about it. It's, it's very, very comfortable to, to hold and shoot. Um, shooting it actually is a pleasure. Um, it, you know, again, I'm a single action, double, um, double action, single action hammer fired guy. So this is a revolver guy. So this is very, very pleasurable for me to shoot. Um, personally, I think it shot better than my, my Glocks. I'm sure the weight had something to do with that. Um, that's just personal opinion. Um, but again, I, I enjoyed this style of, uh, of firearm and this, and this platform. Um, I think the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, uh, on the firearm was, again, if you're not familiar with um, third gen Smith & Wessons, they do have a magazine disconnect, right? So, and again, we've got a clear and safe firearm as we've already demonstrated, but you cannot pull, the trigger is deactivated basically without the magazine inside of it. And that was a safety feature. Um, I've talked about it before, but basically it was, the concept was designed around law enforcement and that if uh, uh, an officer had to give up his gun or was in a hostage situation or something like that, he could drop the mag, kick the mag, give this, you know, kick the firearm or hand the firearm to the assailant or whatever. Or if he thought he was losing control of the firearm, he could eject the mag and basically make the gun um, inoperable and then you know, get away from the situation or pull his, um, his uh, backup gun or whatever. So that was the that was the concept behind it. So if you're not familiar with these third gen guns, um, this is this is something you have to be aware of. The um, the second, or I should say the DA pole is um, long but smooth. Very, very nice in my opinion. There's just nothing wrong with that DA pole at all. Uh, the firearm will then be in uh, the single action, right, um, at this point. And then, I don't know if you'll see and hear this, that was the reset. It, it's so short and, and it is tactical, you, tactile, you can feel it. And then the, um, the single action is right there. The single action function on Smith & Wesson semi-autos from this era, this third gen, is fantastic to me. Um, again, that reset is super short, tactical, you can feel it, and then just you're right there and then it breaks. And, and again, I, but again, I shoot double action hammer fire guns a lot in revolvers. I think that double action is very, very smooth. It's not overly long. It's not gritty. It's a very, very nice trigger on these guns. And so again, I think this makes this firearm still very, very relevant today. Uh, if you're looking for a uh, double action, single action, hammer fired gun, that's a double stack nine. If you think about it, your options are going to be pr you know, pretty short. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing some, some models out there, but I've already mentioned the SIG 224. You've got the CZ Rami. Uh, both of those aren't made anymore. Of course, this isn't made anymore. Um, you know, personally, um, and again, this is another clear and safe firearm, but the, um, the um, HK, you know, 30 SK is probably one. Again, I'm sure I'm missing somebody there, maybe a Walther or something like that, but uh, probably one of the only, you know, commonly uh, acquired in a gun shop or can put one on order that's a double stack, nine millimeter, double action, single action, hammered fired gun that's kind of in this platform, right? And, or size. Um, and this is a wonderful firearm. I, I love this HK. Uh, and really, it's, it has taken kind of this role just because of its... The sights, uh, the rail, uh, the, the just kind of the, the updated features, what's, what HK has done with this 
uh, these grip modules. And, and again, I'll do a I'll do a video on this firearm too because it definitely deserves it. But uh, this is a wonderful firearm. But again, not to detract at all from what the 6906 brings to the table, this is still a very, very nice firearm. Very relevant, again, if you're looking to shoot this kind of platform. Very reliable. I've always said that. The third gen guns were excellent. Uh, anybody can get, you know, I don't want to say a lemon, but anybody can have a problem with, uh, with something mechanical. Uh, we can all relate to that probably. Uh, but generally speaking, these were over-engineered, very well-made pistols with a lot of engineering and production thought, you know, put into the design and the manufacture, and they've just been extremely reliable and, um, and have worked very, very well over the years. And I still think it's, it's viable today. They're obviously harder and harder to find. Uh, as I stated, obviously it's out of production. This went uh, to about 1999. Um, you have to keep your eye out in gun shops and pawn shops. Of course, you can buy online. That's uh, sometimes the, the fastest and easiest way to acquire something like this. Um, but it's always fun to kind of look in local shops and support your local your local shops as well. But, um, you know, hopefully you guys got a, a little out of that. Um, can't remember if I went through this or not, but obviously we've got Smith & Wesson roll stamp there and the traditional Smith & Wesson information stamp on that part of the slide. You've got your serial number and model number. And on this side, it's it's pretty sterile. They just have a small uh, indicator, the, the Smith & Wesson trademark stamp there. Um, so pretty sterile on this side. But uh, again, just, just a very, very nice firearm to own. And I also own the, the blued version as well. I think I've got that on the table, uh, the, uh, the uh, 6904. Um, I think I picked it up earlier when I showed you the, uh, the Novak sights. Uh, this one I was really fortunate uh, to find. It was almost in like new condition, quite frankly. Um, and it's, it's, again, it's its twin, just in a, a blued version. Steel slide with an aluminum. Uh, aluminum frame as this is, uh, but with a steel slide instead of the stainless steel slide. And it's just uh, just as nice, uh, functions just the same way. Um, so again, I hope uh, hope you guys like that. Hopefully I remembered to tell you everything about that that I, I wanted to tell you. Um, hope you enjoyed the Smith & Wesson 6906. And thanks for tuning into the Daily Defender. And we'll see you again on the Daily Defender very soon.